Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 3 of our Caves of Quad journey with Eris the Esper. Uh, let's get back to it. At the end of last episode, we were trying to explore the Rust Caves, grab a bunch of copper wire, and we encountered a slumbering slumberling in two of the caves. We're off to explore the third, and we recruited a rubber fox to be our companion. Because why not? Who doesn't want a cute rubber fox to run around with you having adventures? Oh dear. You're stuck. I can't help you. I'm sorry. I don't have any way to help you. There you go. You're free. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. Sometimes your companions just don't attack. Um things. I don't know why. I'm going to see if our fox has picked up any equipment. Yeah, see they're wearing studded leather armor and a leather cap. I bet they look dashing. Oh, what? What is this, dude? Why are there slumberlings everywhere? It's like the game wants me to get wrecked. Okay, let's pop these off. Hello, archers. So sorry. Please forgive me for destroying you. It's like, I don't want to kill all these snap jaws, but they're just bum rushing me. It's like, why do you have to hate me? Why can't we all just get along and eat vine wafers? Teach me all about your snapjaw culture. Invite me to your local cookout. <laughs> oh man, I bet it would be good actually. Okay. I don't see any more wire, and I'm not interested in in exploring any more of the map with uh, Slumberling. Hey, a leather apron. And I tried to filter out my keyboard with my audio processing but if it's there and it's annoying anyone please let me know and I'll work harder to get rid of it let's see oh these dread root tubers right here these little like dark oh well the fox got rid of it if we see another one I'll show it to you anyways they can make you run away in fear which can be kind of hilarious but also quite disastrous so this leech is hunting us down, even though it can't see us, because it's blind, but it's psychic. So it knows where you are, because you're a psychic. And, uh, unfortunately, the, the only downside to uh, proselytizing is they don't get the HP bonus of Beguiling, which is super strong, actually. We're level 9. So, five more hit points, another mutation point, and an attribute point. Pretty important level. We get our second mutation that we're going to buy, and we're going to dump another point into Ego. And let's buy our next mutation. So, Precognition is very interesting. Um, basically, it's like a save point in a roguelike. Like, you can activate Precognition, see how events will play out. Um... And then, if you die, I believe Precognition automatically brings you back to before you used it. Or you can activate it and go back in time. Or stop using Foresight at uh, any given time to go back to where you were. It's really cool how the developers implemented that. Uh, kudos to them. But we need more offensive power. Because right now, we're, we just can't sustain our laser. So let's take Cryokinesis. It makes a giant square of cold damage, and it hits for three turns in a row. Uh, it's really good. It can freeze enemies so they can't attack, and you see at level 5, uh, the round 1 damage is 5 die 2, uh, 5 die 3, 5 die 4, so it can potentially do quite, um, quite a bit of damage. And our next 
I level up, you can just see that it goes to 6 die 2, 6 die 3, 6 die 4, and increases the chill temperature. So if something gets frozen, that means our companions can go in and just whack it down. Um, so it's actually, it's really, really good. Because there's also pyrokinesis, but that makes like a, as you might imagine, a square of fire. Not nearly as easy for your companion to run into that and fight. Um, now some, some enemies are immune to cold, and some enemies are resistant to cold. Like if they have a whole bunch of fur, they might not freeze, depending on how intense the chill is. Is this guy hostile? No, he's just chilling. He's just vibing. Hello, Leech. Now I really want my companions to get level ups, so that I can see... Uh, he didn't get a level up, did he? Or she, I mean. Nah, she just still has heightened quickness. Oh, you know what? We should turn that off so they stop putting points into it. Yeah, so they'll probably have to wait another level to get a mutation. But that's okay. Not the end of the world. Well, there's some more copper wire, finally. Yay, it's 50 feet of it. Okay. Let's see if we can find some more. Hopefully we can find 200 before... I don't know if the rust wells keep going down forever, or if they open up into, like, a different underground biome at some point. I've never really went too deep in them before, because usually by now I already have all the copper I need. Okay, let's open this. Go ahead and eat something just for fun. The way is blocked. And as you can see, the ambient heat from those, from the fire is actually burning the webs, which I think is kind of cool. Okay, a bunch of snap jaws. And I think snap jaws and plants can hate each other too. Like, I think all the factions are, like, their relationships with each other are randomly generated at the start of the run. Um, so sometimes, if you're in a bad situation, you can just, like, stand back and watch the, uh, all the other characters, like, take care of each other. So that was a spark tick. I don't know if you were able to see that before it disappeared. It's a little yellow bug, and it shoots electricity out of its abdomen. Pretty spooky. Where's my fox? I think rubber gum fox... Foxes? <laughs> fox eye? <laughs> I think it's foxes. Um, they, I believe, are resistant to... Electricity? But don't hold me to that. I wonder if there's like a... Like an admin command I could use to look at their like internal traits and stats. All right, Asmodelia got stronger. They didn't get another mutation because they already leveled up heightened quickness once. There's another 50 feet. Sweet, we're getting closer. Ouch. Can you imagine though, like you're just walking in a cave and a, like some plants try to grab you. How scary would that be? Like, go outside and the kudzu if you ever lived in like the southern part of the United States, you know that kudzu there is just like everywhere. So imagine like going out into your yard even. And there's just kudzu out there and it's like trying to wrap itself around you. Kind of reminds me of Goosebumps. That stay out of the basement episode. Where the dad is like turning into a plant or something. Um. Okay. There's some spiders. Hello, spiders. So sorry. You have valuable XP that I need to juice my extremely egotistical mind. A chest. A hey, bandages. We will take those. Cause we are tired of bleeding. Please give us more copper wire.
Okay, also there is a skill, I don't know if you noticed over here on the left, you pass by some trash, there's a skill that lets you rifle through trash to find things. Mostly just like scraps for artifact making, but, or technology making, but it can be useful. It's really hard to play as a tinker though, because you have no companions, and you're as weak as the Esper is when you start off. So unless you get like a blueprint to learn how to make a turret or something, or you're able to pick up a good gun or whatnot, um, it can be really hard. Cave Spider and Quudzu Symbiote. Okay, so this spider has been infected by the plants and now shares some genome with them. Okay, this crab is scary. Oh, what is that? Aquilipede. Okay. Not too scary as an Esper. If you're a melee, those things can... Oh god. I spoke way too soon. It just like shot out a bunch of qui uh, quills. Um, there we go. We're gonna run upstairs and heal. Cause I jinxed myself by talking smack about the Quillipede. <laughs> and it showed me who was boss. Now things are getting a little bit more scary. I took a lot of damage from that. So quills basically... I forgot, they're, re they're recently um, changed. Um, it used to be, I think anyways, that it was like a passive um, ability where you would take damage if something attacked you or you attack something with quills. But now I believe you can like actively like expel your quills into your target and it does quite a bit of damage as you just saw. Even with 74 HP, I was down to like 25 after, what, 7 turns? So, toughness is definitely uh, a crutch for any character, and it's really good. Um, you can play without toughness, but you gotta be a lot more careful than what I'm being right now. I'm gonna chill this crab. So, hopefully it'll stay frozen. Oh, there was a Quillipede in there, too. Let's get this bug first. This thing is tanky, bro. Oh, my eye, it's still alive. Oops. Forgot. The, uh... Oh, wow. Okay. So it did cleave. There we go. Nice. Our companion having an axe actually helps our laser as well. Because reducing their armor value makes our penetration that much better. The crab is still alive, unfortunately. We're out of lays. Why don't we try a uh, menacing stare on it? Well, it's eyeless. <laughs> That's kind of funny. We stared down an eyeless crab. <laughs> the very uh, the sheer magnitude of anger that was radiating from our menacing stare. I picked up on it and ran for it. Okay. We got 18 rounds for chill. So we'll just run in circles where I can paint and smack this thing around. Now, dancing around like that is an okay tactic for many enemies. But if you ever see like an enemy with like pincers or anything like that, like you want to sprint away from them and you can sprint with uh, K for me anyways now or you can bind that to a hotkey if you prefer um, which will let you like get away from it but things with pincers tend to like rip off your limbs um, which is not something anyone wants generally it is frowned upon to be missing your your limbs uh, as you can see we finally got rusted. Fortunately, it picked the wire strand to rust. I think you can even still turn that in when it's rusted. Don't quote me on that, but I believe so. So, hopefully we can explore without running into any more Quudzu. Kudzu. Whatever. Why are these guys just standing here? You guys okay? Hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, that's strange. Did I press something weird?
Friends? Friends, what are you doing? Okay, well, you guys can hang out there. I'm gonna go upstairs real quick and then come back down and see if we start moving again. This is a little weird. Maybe they can't. Yeah, they can see in the dark. Never mind. They have night vision. That's weird. I wonder what I did to make them do that. Ah, another quillipede. Thing is so tanky. Intimidate. Get out of here. It's such a great skill. Like, something tries to get close to you and you're like, just AoE, make sure that everything runs away from you. It's so good. Now the downside to uh, the light lasing is when you use it all up, you don't have any um, light to see with. And we are once again overburdened. Let's drop that chair. Drop the sheet metal. And I guess we could give all these books to our companion to hold. Or we can make them hold some water. Let's do that. We'll make them hold some water. Here you go. Let's trade. Uh, oh, give items. Duh. So they have quite a lot of... What are these? Sandals of the Riverwise. They have quite a lot of equipment they've picked up over the journey that they replaced. Um, okay. I'm kind of surprised <laughs> that it's that much. So why don't you take two of these water skins? That's so annoying. There we go. There you go. You hold on to those for me, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Ouch. 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 Yay, 50 more feet of wire. We just need a little bit more and we'll be good. Oh, another crab. Let's freeze these. Ta-da. Spark. Goodbye. We're almost level 10. The levels are really stacking up. Don't be afraid also to... Um, Spend your time grinding out a few levels early on. Like, there's really no rush, and there's not really any, like, super big incentive to rush through things in this game. Just take your time. Um, why am I missing HP? Oh, I was probably affected by a boon from eating. Let's make another camp, because we're getting hungry. What did that say? Plus one to hit for the rest of the day. Well, if I was melee, that'd be really nice. So right now we cannot see anything, so why don't we wait a hundred turns and let our light come back? Ta-da! We should probably pick up a glow spear at some point, honestly. And just... Yeah, just carry it around with us. That way we don't have to worry too much about managing our light manipulation. The kudzu! And we could actually just fight these with our chill. Since they're all nicely grouped up like that. Probably should have done that, but oh well. Be careful about freezing yourself. <laughs> um, if you get frozen, then just like the enemies get welled on by your companions. If you're frozen, the enemies will well on you too. Being in a block of ice sadly does not protect you from harm. Although, if you are a, a damage shield type of player, there's an ability called Force Wall, which lets you, like, literally make a wall of pure, like, mental energy that restricts anything from coming through. You can even shoot bullets through it. Okay, so I'm doing the exact opposite of what I told you guys to do. I was sitting there trying to walk away from the Jilted Lover and it was attacking me because I wasn't paying attention. Um, don't do that. <laughs> it's a great way to die. Uh, 
Ouch. Of course a young ivory is there. Oh, it's only 20 feet. Nice, level 10. So Asmodelia learned to jump, apparently at some point. That's a great ability. That'll let her get at our enemy's faces much faster. We're just going to stay here and heal. I think as we... When we get level 12, we get another plus one to all attributes. Um, and that will give us more toughness. And I believe that toughness is also... Uh, retroactive in the sense that you'll get more um, hit points. Where's my Where's my rubber fox at? You're not getting any levels because you're goofing off over here. Okay, so that was a rustation. Those crabs will rust your items. I'm glad we were able to to get rid of that before it got to us. what that was. Okay, no no wire here. Alright, what is this? Sap. I don't think we want any sap. Goodbye. Alright, can only select a visible square. Kind of looked like the kudzu was trying to fight the uh, dread root tubers. I think it is. Guess they don't get along. Yep. No more wire down here, unfortunately. Oh, nice. So they did get. Uh, so that is one bad thing. They learned jump, so now they're jumping into our ice. Um, unfortunately. But now they have a new choice of mutations because they hit level ten. Could give, could give them horns, um, which would cause bleeding, give her some armor, but it gets rid of her ability to wear helmets. It does give her a lot more damage, though. Oh, we could take the stinger with the paralyzing venom. We will take paralyzing venom. That's really good. That's a great mutation. And I think we want to level... Well, we'll just keep it at level one, actually. Why are you never with us? You're always just chilling out over here. Come on, little fox. What are you doing? Come on, you know you want to hang out with us. Maybe it's because you're targeted. Now will you come hang out with us? Yes. Now is random. Note to self, if your ally is targeted, your other ally doesn't know what to do. They're like, should I attack them? Should I not attack them? Uh, okay. I don't see any wire, but I see a lot of enemies. Let's take a look. So this is just a regular chameleon. Spark tick is probably the most dangerous. I think this hermit doesn't like us either. Ah, uh, it's because he's part of the Kudzu symbiote. Alright, let's take out the spark tick. And then let's take out the chameleon. And we'll take out this guy. And let's freeze this crab over here before we run out of... Uh... Oh, I don't want to freeze my... Whatever. We'll be inefficient. It's just how it has to be. Okay, so the snap jaws are fighting this crab over here. We'll let them do that as we slowly walk over. And then as you can see, the crab took on all of them in one, even though they were swarmers. They're pretty strong. Come on. We're about to get out of here. Oops, sorry about that. This thing is so tanky. I'm gonna use a menacing stare. Get out of here. There we go. 
And there's our wire strand. Sweet. Now we can finish that quest. Oh no, another rust station. Or is that just a regular crab? That's just a regular crab. Bloody eyeless crab. We'll freeze it. Let our companions mop it up. Let's get out of here. Let's. I am. Uh, this is deep enough for my tastes. Okay. So. Oh, we're stuck. Get rid of those kudzu. Ta-da! Alright, so now we're going to go back to Joppa, give him the wire, that will advance the main quest line. Um, we successfully avoided the slumbering, slumberlings, and we got lost. That's okay, because Joppa should be right down here. We recognize the area anyways. Okay. Cool. Oh dear. You're not going to go fight, are you? Oh, you picked up some leather moccasins and put them on. <laughs> I guess they wanted to wear shoes. They were like making a beeline for the Elder, and I was like, oh, you're not going to fight them, are you? Okay, this guy's like, oh my god, you brought me copper wire, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I made this old recoiler for you. You can use it to come back to Joppa whenever you want to. So now we have these cool, like... items that you learn about called recoilers and basically they need to be powered by energy and if they if they have a cell and you activate it it'll teleport you back to wherever the uh, recoiler is like primed for um, let's talk to him again and he's like it's working genius they said it couldn't be done they said I was mad they were all... Uh, what's this? What is that? Wait. It's repeating itself. Anyways. Um, he's Now that he sees you as his apprentice, uh, he's getting some like transmission message that he can't decipher. And he's like, uh, will you take this to this group of entities called the Baruth, uh, Bar Barathromites uh, at Gritgate? Um, so that's basically our next quest. We need to take this transcoded message to this group of, um, as you can see right here, this group of, um, how do you say this, Urshib. They are mutant albino cave bears <laughs> with quills. <laughs> um, basically, they are like super techie albino cave bears. Um, they're super, super smart. They are scholars who like study everything and anything they can get their hands on. Um, so you're going to take it to them to decipher the signal. And if I butchered some of the information about them, I'm very sorry. Uh, I haven't played Caves of Quad in like two years, I think. Um, okay. And so we also get a cool droid scrambler, which will protect us from robots. Robots can kick your ass. Um, that is one of the benefits of being a true kin. You can rebuke robots and like make them follow you. Um, which is pretty sweet. Let's see. Make camp. Oh, we already have a camp nearby. You can see up there in the top left, like the temperature, and that I'm hungry and quenched. So my thirst is, my thirst is quenched. But if you start... If you let your hunger or thirst go down too far, you'll start getting some pretty nasty negative effects. So, we are not going to go to Gritgate just yet. We're going to make the long journey to the Stilt, which is this uh, big icon up here in the top left in the vast salt desert. So let's make our way up there. We're already lost. Um, get out of swamps. Do not, do not play in the water. It's a great way to get your arms tore off. <laughs> Maybe not here, but in a lot of rivers, there are these terrifying swarming like fish creatures that will just rip your arms off. Um, well, any part of your body, really, but they seem to target the arms first. 
bunch of snap draws. Okay, since the animus of a vast mind, so let's be very careful. I don't see anything yet. Okay, there they are. That sense psychic coming in handy. Okay. So we resisted being confused. In fact, we reflected confusion. Now, our companion is confused, so that's dangerous for us. Um, but, this is one, another one of the reasons I wanted uh, mental armor. Where am I? Oh, derp. I need to press M. There we go, status. So mental mirror. Um, as you can see, if the attack fails to penetrate your mental uh, armor, it's reflected back at your attacker. So he failed to penetrate our mental armor and confused himself. We, we ran up a little bit to get away from our companion because she hits hard like a tank. We're going to freeze this guy. Our fox jumped in and froze themselves, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, so here's another thing. Bone of victory, your swelling ego curves, the psychic aether, and causes the psyche of Nashukat no longer, Toes, Osprey, and Magnolia, to collide with your own. So you're like mind melding. Um, as the weaker of the two, its binding energy is exceeded, and it explodes. Would you like to encode its psionic bits on the holographic boundary of your own psyche? Basically, really fancy way of saying, do you want to absorb this thing's mind? And we're going to say, yeah, we want permanent ego bonuses. I think that brings our ego up to 30. Yeah, so we have a plus 7 bonus, which is pretty powerful. Um, yeah, our psychic glimmer is not that bad yet. I think it'll get there. <laughs> It will get there, don't you worry. <laughs> Won't be long before some very interesting entity starts showing up. I'm actually working on a mod for this game myself, but it has a long way to go before I feel like I'm ready to release it. But I'm trying to expand quite a lot on... the whole aspect of Toe's Servants. Um, the mod I'm working on would actually like let you go to different realms of reality um, and, and interact with the worlds of these servants. Um, but it's still a long, long way from where I want it to be. I feel like I have a lot of the like generation done, but in terms of art, yeah, just until I get the money to like hire someone to do tiles, um, I probably won't be releasing it. And we sense a sinister presence nearby, which I think is our twin. Let's see if we can figure out what this glowing flower down here is. A Dreamweaver. The Dreamweaver is as beautiful as it is mesmerizing. It is said, gazing into one may restore peace of mind, and selling dreams so that one's thoughts may rest. Okay. Where is our twin? Okay, he has a rifle. So, this might not go well for us. One of the things about the evil twin is his light level matches ours, so it might just bounce off of him. And it actually did not. So that's nice. We're going to chill him too. Oh, we're not close enough. Ouch. 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 I just need to get close enough to freeze you. Aha! Now you're frozen. I win! <laughs> you were trying to shoot me with a gun, but I was busy freezing you. I mean, it's always pretty scary when you see your, um, when you twin. And also, unluckily, our companion didn't have, uh... Oh, you can harvest this? That's terrible. Oh, wait, I think our companion just harvested it. Because they're a water vine farmer, so they come knowing harvest. Let's see. They harvested a dream. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Let's take it. What can we do with a dream? Go 
golden wet ivy leaves entangle your mind as you peer into its shining recesses. The dream never ends. Alright, we'll hold on to that for a long time. I have no idea what that's for. Oh right, we're supposed to be going to the stilt. I'm getting I'm getting uh very distracted. That was cool. Do we ever get unlost? No, we're so lost. What is that? Oh, that's a fairy. This little pink thing is a fairy. Pink fairy. A joyous, vivid being. It buzzes about without a care for the happenings around it. Living in a perpetual state of blissful ignorance. And it has something called dazzling aura. I wish I could, like, see what, what those things are. Action cue inconsistency. Removing invalid object. Never seen that before. Oh no, not again. Another psychic hunter. Be careful. So, I think what I'll start doing is I'm going to try and put... What is this over here? Okay, it's a snap jaw. I'm going to start throwing my chill like behind whatever's attacking me so that my companions can still rush in without getting frozen. Snap jaw. Okay, someone's shooting. Oh, there he is, over there. Uh, I don't see any uh, terribly scary mutations. So let's just freeze you. Let's get a little closer, unfortunately. Okay, they have pyrokinesis. We got stunned. You're still stunned. Okay, that was scary. Oh, oh, I am also frozen. Good thing we have companions. So they had both pyrokinesis and cryokinesis. There's a snapjaw gunner. We'll take your shotgun shells, please. Thanks. Oh, another pump shotgun. We don't need that. I mean, we could sell it, but I don't want the weight right now. And then, unfortunately, they used all their shells. Are we still lost? We are still lost. Okay, there's some tortoises who hate us, apparently. This chameleon now likes us. Let's see if we can penetrate a tortoise's armor. Yeah, we can. So our laser's getting pretty strong. Oh, did you see where it said paralyzed? That was pretty cool. Took out the, uh... That was, that was the stinger from, uh... Our companion. What's this? Oh, it's just an iron battle axe. Get out of here. Is this pig hate us? Yeah. Pig doesn't like us either. You can see, like, the things, the snapjaw and the chameleon are both fighting the turtle, but its armor is just, like, so strong they can't hurt it. Okay. But turtles do have a chance to be knocked prone, which is kind of like. Normally, if you were a fighter, that's like their gimmick. You gotta knock them on their back so you can, like, take them out. That was a two-headed boar. Oh, they want to fight this thing. Whatever, we'll take it out. Grab a little bit of XP. You know, I don't think I've seen the rubber fox get a level yet. Which is kind of wild. How long are we going to be lost? Yay, the rubber fox finally got a level. And they got deft throwing, so now they can throw things. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> yeah, it seems like their intelligence is almost as low as mine, because they only got 52 uh, skill points. Oh my gosh, that kind of hurts my ears a little bit. Or not hurts my ears, but irritates them. Just hearing that constant ch -ch 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 noise. We're lost forever. Maybe we'll run into a farmer soon. They'll give you directions. 
What was that? Oh, a willow tree. Okay, there's a crocodile. Oh, they don't mind us. That's nice. We'll just keep going in a somewhat diagonal until we reach the salt plains. There we go. We're now in the salt desert. And there are a few things here that can really hurt you. Like flying, there's like flying things called dawn gliders. They shoot like fire out of their mouth. These guys. And they are all hostile. You regain your bearings. Nice. Ouch. Okay, let's ignore these things. Let's get going to the stilt. We'll probably get lost at least one more time before we get there. I stand corrected. So you get five, 1500 XP for just coming here. A lot of like new characters, you, kind of fun to just make a beeline here because you go like straight to level four. Like if you're super weak and you don't have an option for a companion, you could probably try running here and getting some levels. This guy wants you to share secrets of your chef with him. He will give you a boatload of experience for it, which is why I said in the last video to make sure you learn as many secrets about your chef as you can. Other than like lore, it's also super good for character advancement. And in case you don't have any secrets, you can get one from this statue, but we've already gotten that secret. So now we'll go talk to him. Make sure your companions are nearby so that they get experience too. And we'll do a water ritual with this guy. Um, now the coiled lamb hates us, apparently, because he had... Or no, sorry, the roots, frogs, and the compass broker cabal. I read that backwards. But it's good to do the water ritual with them because you can learn first aid. Which is a very useful skill. Let you staunch your wounds outside of combat. Um, and here you can learn more about who is Reshef. Um, we're going to start sharing secrets. Um, as you can see, the first one gives you 250 experience, then 500, then 1,000, then 2,000. Then 3,000. We just went up two levels. Um, we got another mutation point. All of our attributes went up by a point again. We got 4,000 experience. The rubber fox finally got a uh, mutation. Their ego is terrible, so we're not going to give them that. Phasing would be interesting, but let's give the fox multiple arms because that sounds hilarious to me. All right, we don't have any more secrets. But our companions got much stronger. We got much stronger. Our dodge and our strength, our intelligence, all of these aren't quite so terrible anymore. And we're almost able to get another mutation. Um, as you can see, our psychic glimmer finally went up a tick, finally. So now we're being pursued by Harriers, Toe Servants. Um, and now we're being plucked from these shallows rather than from the nest. So it's just kind of letting you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're no longer like an egg. You're, you know, like a baby bird. Um, see, our light manipulation is getting pretty good. Um, let's see, what about cryokinesis? Yeah, seven die, two, three, and four. Which is great damage. And you can freeze most things at this point. Uh, 10 mental armor is pretty sweet. Beguiling now gives 35 bonus hit points, which is wild. Let's finish off... Uh, let's grab Snake Oiler. So now we are get a plus 4 bonus to Ego. Well, plus 2 is 4 points higher. Um, so that, for purposes of buying things, our ego is now 35, which is 
Absolutely ridiculous. And then we already know first aid. And because most of our stats are so low, um, really the things we want to start learning next are endurance. This is really good. Each round of your days are stunned. You have a toughness minus 10% chance to shake off the effect. You also take 25% less damage from poison. And about now is a great time to pick up poison reduction. Um, so every round we now have a 14% uh, chance of shaking off stuns, which is pretty good. You know, it's better than not having a chance. Make sure you talk to this Kendrin, or not Kendrin, but Hendrin. Um, so horses really don't like this pariah from Hendrin lands, so we're not going to share water with them, unfortunately. But uh, they will give you an, another side quest. And this is one of my favorite quests in the entire game. It's, it's really interesting um, to me. Um, so you learn about this uh, deer person or animal person's hometown called Bela. Um, they've opened their borders for the first time to hire like outside people like us. Um, like ever. And they're like, something must be really terrible. Um, think about Hendren, if they leave their home, they're like banished forever and never allowed to come back. So they're like, I still love my home. Will you go see what's happening for me, please? And you're like, yeah, sure. And you can, when you're playing, you can get more information about them if you want to. Um, they're like, thank you. And they give you a... Uh, they mark it on your map for you and give you a yonder cane. Which yonder canes are pretty cool. We're going to save ours for when we eventually unlock cooking. <laughs> you can do some cool things with yonder cane when you cook, like give you teleportation effects and whatnot. Let's eat some hot and spiny, which gives us heat resistance and we're in damage reflection. Now the stilt is filled with shops. We're going to share some water with this warden. Um... She can like give you the lay of the land, and unfortunately that made a water baron's like us less, but it is what it is. Um, we could learn shield from her, or we could um, keep our reputation higher with wardens and eventually ask a warden to join us for a third companion, which is hilarious to me. So I'm gonna refrain from asking for any favors or learning any skills. And I will show you the next uh, grab bag of goodies you can get in the stilt. So here, every game, a librarian will generate of some random race. This one happens to be uh, a flame beard. And you give them your books. And you get XP for your books, depending on their rarity and uh, a few other things like if they're illuminated or not. I can't really find too much rhyme or reason behind the XP amounts for books other than rarity and illumination. It seems like mostly they are just um, generated at the time like you pick them up. As you saw we already got level 13. Hopefully our companions will get a level 2. I heard another one. We're pretty, probably pretty close to 14. Yeah, we're going to have like 2,000 experience left to get to level 14. Um, let's run up and see what they learned. Oh no, it's not... It's not canvassing the chat. <laughs> oh well, that's okay. You can see that the rubber fox learned to jump. Let's take a look and see how they changed. So what skills do you have? You could learn first aid, that'd be good. So you can see that the skills are locked because their attributes don't meet them yet. That's okay. What about your attributes? You're now strong and tough. And your companions also get the plus one to all attributes as they level up. Um, 
I'm gonna get one more mutation for you. Height and quickness is so good though. It's not that great at the moment because their equipment's not like top tier, but when it is, we'll probably just max out height and quickness. What about you, little rubber fox? How are you progressing? Most things are locked to you. You're learning acrobatics pretty well. You learned <laughs> you did learn a piece of short blade. You learned three you learned all your tactics. What about your attributes? Okay. Strong, quick, tough. Dull, gullible, and abrasive. Alright. So this is the leader of the Mechanimists. I think that's how you say it. Uh, yeah. Loved by the Mechanimists. Mechanimists. The Mechanimists? Mechanimists. Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to double check myself. Like, well, triple check myself. Um, hated by fish for cooking them a rancid meal. We don't want to piss off fish any more than we have to. Um, but we will talk to them and see what they have to trade. If they have some shotgun shells, we'll take those for our companion. Actually, maybe we'll wait. Because I don't want them to use up their shotgun shells for no reason. That's fine. Happily, we did get enough points to buy another mutation, which we'll do now. Okay, we're going to take time dilation so we can slow down things around us. I don't know, that, I think that affects our companions too, though, unfortunately. Such a hard choice between precognition and time dilation. We'll take time dilation. Whatever. What you understood to be the psychic sea was only a pond. There were other watchers now, countless in number, beyond the gulf of materiality. Points of light glimmer in all directions, but what are directions on a space that cannot be ordered? All you know now is an aether vaster than the very mathematics that describe it, and you are not, nor will you ever be, again alone. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so we're starting to get pretty strong, and as we gain strength, we are now visible to psychic beings from other dimensions. <laughs> so, things are about to get interesting. Um, unfortunately, our, we're not level 8 yet in our mutations, but we'll get there. Um... If a creature's right beside us, they're taking pretty heavy quickness penalties now. Um, so, we'll f when possible, we'll try not to use it with our companions standing right beside us. But let's go check out some of these shops and see what they got. So, here, these are helmets. Got anything good? Crimson Hood, Electric Snail Shell. Hmm, we'll take this Norm Skull. That gives us more ego. Never have enough ego. And we'll sell these beaded bracelets. Now you can see, like, the value of this bracelet, I think, is like, on a normal character, it's like 10 drams of water. We're selling them for like 76 a piece, which is ridiculous. I want to buy the Crimson Hood just because I want to know what, what it does. We got money to spare. So this obviously gives plus one ego. This doesn't give anything. It's just a piece of fabric. Okay. We'll drop it on the ground. Maybe one of our companions wants it. Let's drop this Witchwood wreath. Alright, so that brings our ego up to 32, I believe. And we're about 55 minutes into the video, so I think now is probably a good place to stop. Thank you for joining me in another day of adventuring in Quad, and I hope to see you next time.